Bye. Bye.
so close. I can hardly see you. <laughs> Maybe that's the point. Uh, that's a good idea. I think the other one's a better idea. You can't see me. So today is the festival of Gundicha Marjana. Put this. And literally meaning the cleansing of the Gundicha temple. Gundicha is the name of the temple in Puri, a temple in Puri. It is about two or three, maybe two or three kilometers from the main temple of Lord Jagannath. If you have the good fortune to go to Jagannath Puri, you will see there's a very large temple in the center of the city. Sri Shetra, Jagannath temple, very famous. All over India, practically people know of this temple and of Jagannath Puri. But they may not have heard of the Gundicha temple. They will have heard of it if they are familiar with the Jagannath Rathayatra. Tomorrow is the Rathayatra in Puri. Mm -hmm. It's the Rathayatra in a few places in Iskcon. And the day before this Rathayatra festival, where Lord Jagannath goes from his temple, to this other temple called Gundicham Mandir. This temple represents Vrindavan. As far as I understand, it is named after the wife of Indra Dumna, the king who established the temple of Jal, the deities, the temple of Jagannath, the original temple, not the one now. And uh, that temple, Lord Jagannath stays for two, no, one week, just one week, yeah, just over a week. And uh, then there will be a return Rathayatra from the temple of Gundisha back to his normal temple. We only do the one-way uh, Rathayatra. Some? 
some countries they do the two way. They do actually follow the system in Jagannath Puri, but not many in ISKCON. So today is the day when they cleanse or cleanse the temple of Gundicha. And so there's a very wonderful pastime in the Chaitanya Charitamrita which describes this pastime. We will read some of it. Not allowed to read all because of time. You can read it if you wish, but the chapter does not only deal with the cleansing of the temple, but the main subject matter is the cleansing of the temple. And unfortunately, I did not pass a message as to a verse, nobody asked me anyway. But we will just recite the first verse of this chapter. Chapter 12, if you want to follow, of the Madhya Lila. Chaitanya Charitamrita, Madhya Lila, Chapter 12. And we'll read the first verse, then we will go forward to the pastime. Shri Gundicha Mandiram Atma Vindai Samajayam Kshalan Shalanataksa Goram Pachita Vachitalam Ujjalam Cha Krishna Paveshopai Kam Chikar Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu washed and cleansed the Gundicha temple with his <coughs> devotees and associates. In this way, he made it as cool and bright as his own heart. And thus, he made the temple a befitting place for Lord Sri Krishna to sit. That was text 1 of the 12th chapter. That's just introducing the subject. And then we'll go forward to yes. to text number um, I think 79 of the first chapter. What has happened is that Lord Chaitanya has asked for permission from the king of Arissa to indirectly to cleanse the temple himself. He's requested permission and the caretaker of the temple has said that this is not a service befitting you but if you so desire <coughs> Let it be. And the caretaker of the temple provided all the facilities for the Lord. All the brooms, helpers, and so on. So the next day, this is two days before Rathi Yatra, then on this day, in the morning, early, the Lord took his personal associates, this is text 79, with him and with his own hand he smeared sandalwood pulp on their bodies. He then gave each devotee a broom with his own hand and taking all of them personally with him the Lord went to Gundicha. In this way the Lord and his, so and his associates went to cleanse the Gundicha temple. At first, they cleanse the temple with the brooms. You brush the temple. Now when you brush or cleanse the temple, the process is you start the higher parts first. Even when you clear, clean a building, you should start high up because 
the dust will come down. Of course, it may go up, but then it comes down. Um, otherwise, if you do it the other way around, the tendency is you know, it will again make the floor dirty. So they started cleansing the temple. Everything inside the temple very nicely, including the ceiling. He then took up the sitting place, Singhasana, the <coughs> Lord's sitting place, and he cleansed it and again put it in its original place. Thus the Lord and his companions cleansed and swept all the temple buildings. And the... What do you call the Of the deities, what do you call them? The domes, what are they called? The arch. Huh? The arch? No. These canopies? Anyway, whatever they are, both the deities. They cleanse everything. Thus the Lord and his companions cleansed and swept all the temple buildings, big and small, and finally cleansed the area between the temple and the Kirtan Hall. Indeed, hundreds of devotees were engaged in cleansing all around the temple, and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was personally carrying out the operation just to instruct others. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu washed and cleansed the temple in great jubilation, chanting the holy name of Lord Krishna all the time. When we were early, younger, say in body, and uh, <clears throat> it was a common practice in the temple that everybody would clean together and everyone would sing together, following in the footsteps of this example shown by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Similarly, all the devotees were also chanting and at the same time performing their respective duties. And this was a common practice. No matter what service you were performing, you would chant Hare Krishna. I noticed yesterday a rare example, Mangu, uh, midday RT yesterday, Madhavendra Puri Prabhu was offering arti and he was singing along with the kirtan. That was a standard for all pajaris. They would sing, and not just wave items, but they would sing Hare Krishna if there was a kirtan going on. And every service, cooking, cleansing, even, I used to, I can't seem to do it anymore, I've lost my taste, but even when I'd be answering mail on, on the uh, internet, I'd be chanting the whole time. I don't seem to do that now. Good meditation. The entire beautiful body of the Lord was covered with dust and dirt. In this way it became transcendentally beautiful. At times when cleansing the temple, the Lord shed tears. And in some places he even cleansed the cleansed with those tears. After this, the place where the deity's food was kept, called the Boga Mandir, was cleansed. Then the yard, that means the outside area, was cleansed. And then all the residential quarters, one after the other. After Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu collected all the straw, dust and grains of sand in one place, he gathered it all in his cloth and threw it outside. They didn't have brushes and pans in those days. He collected it in his own cloth. Following the example of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, all the devotees in great jubilation began to gather straws and dust with their own clothes and throw them outside the temple. The Lord then told the devotees, I can tell how much you have labored and how well you have cleansed the temple simply by seeing all the straw and dust that you have collected outside. He would look at it. They would take it outside, put it in a pile, and he would see who has collected the most. Like Sankirtana. Kind of Sankirtana. 
and sometimes we clean, but we don't clean very well. And maybe some excuses are there, but the real factor is the more we cleanse, and so we'll see this is, this whole pastime is a comparative to cleansing our hearts. We tend to clean what we can see. We have to go further. There are so many little, you know, just like in this room, we really want to clean right here behind Bhagavat, there is a radiator. And sometimes, maybe the devotees are cleansing it now, but I've sometimes in the past gathered more dirt from that radiator than from the whole floor. Devotees cleanse the whole floor, then not touch that, and then you go there, and you get more dirt out of the radiator, stuck between it or underneath it, than from the whole floor. And so many other places, underneath something, behind something. You'd be amazed how much dirt accumulates. What to speak of our hearts. So many dirty things are there. Not just what we can see, not even just our apparent tendencies, but the aparabdhas, those which are not seen, we have to clean deep down the very causes of our behaviour and our whatever, our unwanted reactions to situations, etc. We have to go deep. Krishna consciousness is a deep process. It's not just another surface activity. Even though all the devotees, we're back to the book, 91, even though all the devotees collected dirt in one pile, the dirt collected by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was much greater. Mm -hmm. He was uh, cleansing so, so strong. His, what can we say? Lord Chaitanya is the leader of the devotees. He's the supreme personality. He's whatever. He's no one... We just follow in his footsteps. We're tiny little quant, but we give everything we can. After the inside of the temple was cleansed, the Lord again allotted areas for the devotees to cleanse. Once was not enough. The Lord then ordered everyone to cleanse the inside of the temple very perfectly by taking the finer dust, the straws and the grains of sand, and throwing them outside, the very finer ones. After Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and all the devotees cleansed the temple for the second time, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was very happy to see the cleansing work. Krishna consciousness is basically a cleansing movement. It's all about cleaning. Within, without, around. We clean our hearts, we clean our bodies, we clean our clothes, we clean the temple, we clean around, and we clean the environment. It's a cleansing process. All forms of cleansing. One devotee, one of my god brothers named Kula Shekhar Prabhu, when he joined, first devotee to join in London, Kula Shekhar. 1969, he got initiated by Srila Prabhupada in uh, George Harrison's estate. So he was, he was very, he was very, a devotee, he liked to do things nicely. Prabhupada gave him an instruction, he said, if you learn nothing else in this movement, be clean. Learn to clean nicely. He said. Keep everything clean. And he was always very clean. And he loved to do things very nicely, clean the brass perfectly. Baba said, cleaning the brass means you're cleaning your heart. That means the deity is brass. It should be sparkling, shining clean all the time. Some temples you go to, you do not even know if it's brass. It's so dark, it's so brown, dull. That means our heart is dull. They should be cleansed. Our rooms sometimes. Some devotees, they, 
they do what they're told and they cleanse the temple nicely. You go to their room and, please forgive the statement, but in English we call it a pigsty. <laughs> you know what that term means, you can guess if you don't. It's such a mess, such a mess, clothes everywhere, such a mess. Not washed and cleansed. Our room should be cleansed, including the toilet, by the way. <laughs> Everything should be cleaned. As much as possible daily, but not necessarily possible. But everything should be kept clean. Clothing, neat and tidy also. Not just clean, but neat and tidy. And if we see some garbage, throw some more, right? <laughs> that must be the garbage dump. Everyone's throwing their, their rubbish on the, the path outside. I guess that's what we do with their rubbish. Just throw it on the path. No, you pick it up and put it where it's meant to be, in the bin. In the West we have bins. Because we have so much inorganic matter. Plastic, tins, bottles, you name it. Um, whereas in past times there wasn't much inorganic matter. They didn't have plastic. Maybe there was some, but not much. Mostly it was wood and straw and maybe some metals, but even met natural metals are also, in one sense, they're organic. Now we have all these artificial aluminium and so on. Anyway, you know, you got the point. So try to be a part of the solution and not a part of the problem. Pick things up, put them in the bin. This way, we attract Krishna's attention. You're cleansing what belongs to him. Everything, not just the temple, the world, the universe belongs to him. Srila Prabhupada would sometimes teach us, even in the public, to do things we wouldn't think of, like turn off taps. You know, he didn't like to see anywhere in Krishna's kingdom anything wasted or, you know, of course we can't spend our whole life doing these things. But the principle is there. At least the temple, our room, our body, everything, our clothes should be neat, clean and tidy. Hmm? As much, not just as much, it should be. Not just as much as possible. It should be. Practically, Prabhupada said, cleanliness, we hear this saying very often, cleanliness is next to godliness. And I heard one time he said it is godliness. I don't know if it was ever recorded. He said it is godliness. It's not just next to it, it is godliness. You cannot be godly without being clean. They don't go together. The Lord, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and all the devotees Cleanse the temple for a second time. We probably have heard this, that the gopis, one of their main activities is cleansing. And everything looks perfectly clean, but they're still cleaning. Maybe it looks perfectly clean to us, but it can never be clean enough. They always want it to be cleaner and cleaner. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was very happy to see the cleansing work. While the temple was being swept, about a hundred men stood ready with filled water pots and they simply awaited the Lord's order to throw the water from them. In different systems, temples were made of stone. We can't imitate that here. Our temple here is made of wood and so many electronic things are here and different items. It's not the same. If the whole temple was made of marble or stone, then this particular pastime now is very appropriate. But the principle is still the same. We may wash with some cloth. As soon as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu called for water, all the men immediately brought the hundred water pots, which were completely filled, and delivered them to the Lord. In this way, 
Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu first washed the main temple and then thoroughly washed the ceiling, the walls, the floor, the sitting place and everything else within the room. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself and his devotees began to throw water onto the ceiling. We don't get a hose, you can't reach it with throwing. Get a hose. That would not be very practical in our situation here. You have electric lights and so many things. And anyway, you can understand. In this way, Sri well, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his devotees began to wash the sitting place of Lord Jagannath with his own, uh, Lord Chaitanya began to wash the sitting place of Lord Jagannath with his own hands. That means where Lord Jagannath would come to sit during that week. And all the devotees began to bring water to the Lord. All the devotees within the temple began to wash. Each and one of them had a broom in his hand. And in this way they cleansed the temple of the Lord. They would throw water with a broom. Then they, they would not use a mop like we do. They use a broom and they kind of like broom it out, you know, the water. Still in India you see this. Someone brought water to pour into the hands of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We're going to skip this section. No, a little bit. We'll move on a little bit to text number 104. The Lord mopped the rooms with his own clothes and he polished the throne with them also. In this way, all the rooms were cleansed with a hundred water pots. After the rooms had been cleansed, the minds of the devotees were all clean, as clean as the rooms. And you will experience that when you cleanse with all your hearts and as thoroughly as you can, you will feel very cleansed within. It's a fact. It's not just a theory. The same when one absorbs oneself in kirtan, in chanting. One feels, you can feel it, you can feel this kind of sublime cleansed feeling within your heart. Hmm? Same when we're cleaning. Of course they're all chanting at the same time, by the way, as we heard earlier. They're not just brushing and sweeping and mopping or whatever we do. They are also chanting at the same time. Jiva Goswami says that this, when we chant alongside our services, this helps to reduce the tendency for our false ego to start to uh, come into play and think that I'm doing it and think I'm doing, no one else is doing it, I'm only doing it, they're lazy. All kinds of horrible thoughts come into our mind. I don't like this. All kinds of things. In other words, we're saying, I don't want to serve Krishna. So when we chant at the same time, it helps to reduce that tendency of the false ego, which wants to see things separately from Krishna. It helps us to see it in relationship with Krishna when we chant. Of course, there's much, you could say it may take time, and it's only to help to evoke that change of heart. And it will, depending on the sincerity and their, their you could say, faith and so on. But this is the process. They all chanted. When the temple was cleansed, it was purified, cool and pleasing, just as if the Lord's own pure mind had appeared. The spiritual world is pure. There is no, when we say pure, it doesn't just mean clean from the external, it means internally clean. There is no envy, no envy, even though different devotees have different services and they may not associate particularly because they have a different perspective and a different bhav, a different emotion, etc. But there is no envy between devotees. Even between other living entities who do not have human forms, there is no envy. 
There is no greed for love of devotion, yes. All these other characteristics you will find in their pure state, greed and lust, even sometimes anger is there as a secondary emotion or a secondary bhava to enhance the, 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 uh, the spirit of the primary ones. It's like a little spice in a sabji. Eh? It can make it even tastier, a little salt. Without salt, it's not very tasty. What have we got for lunch today? Salt. <laughs> what is salt and pepper? You will not be very inspired to take lunch. What have we got salt for lunch today? Salt and rice, but there's no um, rice and potatoes, but there's no salt and pepper. There's no salt in the potatoes. There's no salt in the rice. It's tasteless, right? Practically, there has to be a little bit of that there to make it very tasty. Yeah? So these other secondary, you could say, you think, well, there's a room for anger in those spiritual, world. but it enhances the, the taste of the primary. The primary factor in a meal is not the salt and the pepper. It's the vegetables, the rice, the dal, the chapatis, whatever it is, the, you know, something or another. But it's not the spices, but they enhance the taste. Huh? They make it very attractive. You want more. Yesterday, a very nice prasadam was cooked. Very nice, my poor Chandra Prabhu. And I don't know what happened, but I felt like I was tasting sweet and sour sabji. I mix everything together, my mayavadi. I mix the salad, the rice, the, everything in one whole thing. I, didn't, I don't taste sweet, so I mixed the whole thing together. And I don't know what it was, but it tasted like sweet and sour. It put me back 55 years ago when I would go to the Chinese restaurant and get the sweet and sour, you know, vegetable prep. It was really very nice for some. Uh, it made it enhanced, they enhanced each other and it made a very nice preparation like that. So like that, the variety, spiritual world is full of variety. Variety. Yeah. And there is these secondary factors are there, but there is no envy. Envy, you could say indirectly, is there that this devotee is doing better than I am. I wish I could serve Krishna as pleasingly as they are. But it's not envious of the person. You know, that type of envy doesn't exist. Since hundreds of men were engaged in bringing water from the lake, there was no place to stand on the banks. Consequently, someone began to draw water from a well. Hundreds of devotees bought pot, water in pots, and hundreds took the empty pots away to fill them up again. Again and again they were bringing water. It wasn't just once off. With the exception of Nichananda Prabhu, Advaita Chaya, Srup Damodar, Brahmananda Bharati, and Paramananda Puri, everyone was engaged in filling the water pots and bringing them there. Many of the water pots were broken when people collided with one another, and hundreds of men had to bring new water pots to fill. Some people were filling the pots, and others were washing the rooms, but everyone was engaged in chanting the holy name of Krishna and Hari. Hare Krishna! Chant as you clean, chant as you cut, chant, chant as you wash. Chant as you bathe. Prabhupada's written, you can chant Hare Krishna in the schoolroom. You can chant Hare Krishna in the bathroom. You can chant Hare Krishna everywhere, while you sleep, while you eat. There's an art of chanting while you eat. Don't try to imitate it unless you know the art. It'll make a big mess everywhere. And while you sleep, of course, that's not something you can necessarily practice. But the more we practice chanting during the day, the good uh, there will be a better chance of chanting while you sleep. Sometimes you hear devotees in their sleep, they're not even aware of it. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna. They go back. The holy name comes out. Sometimes in your dreams you'll chant Hare Krishna or Srimad Bhagavatam or it's a devotional service or some great devotee or Krishna himself. In your dreams, one, 
Some people were filling the pots and others were washing the room, but and we read, everyone was chanting. One person begged for a water pot by chanting the holy names, Krishna, Krishna, if they wanted anything. And another delivered a pot while chanting, Krishna, Krishna. They didn't ask for a pot, they just said, Krishna, Krishna. Automatically you knew they wanted a pot. And to give you one, they said, Krishna, Krishna. <laughs> Whenever anyone had to speak, he did so by uttering the holy name of Krishna. Because we're not perhaps on that level. You're in the kitchen, the cook says, Krishna, Krishna. <laughs> and you say back, Krishna, Krishna. So you may not know what he wants. <laughs> you may not give him what he wants either. And it may not be Krishna, Krishna in the next sentence. It will be something else. We, we're not quite on that level. But you can get the idea that Krishna in the centre of everything we do. <coughs> Whenever anyone had to speak, he did so by uttering the holy name of Krishna. Consequently, the holy name of Krishna became an indication for everyone who wanted something. So we do want something when we chant Krishna, Krishna, isn't it? Hare Krishna, we want something. What do you want? Service to Krishna. Service to Krishna at our stage, we want service. We may not think like that, and when we're asked to do service, we say, no, I'm too busy chanting. <laughs> I've got other things to do. I'm tired. Someone else can do it. Why are you asking me? We immediately boom back. That means we're not chanting Hare Krishna, really. We're, the letters are coming out, but we're not actually associating. If you know, if you love somebody and they say, can you do something, you don't do it, that means you have no love for them. We don't love them. We may associate them for our own purposes. We may get some pleasure out of being with them, but that's not love. Love means we put aside my idea of being an enjoyer, and we dedicate ourselves to satisfying that person. That's love. At least in a practical way. It goes deeper. So we're calling, Krishna, please engage me in your service. Oh, that's nice. Please do this. No. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare. Can you please come? No. I'm busy. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. Our mind, you know, think about it. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was vibrating the holy name of Krishna in ecstatic love. He himself was performing the work of hundreds of men. It appeared that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu were cleansing and washing with a hundred hands. He approached every devotee just to teach him how to work. I was in one temple one time and you could not get on the roster to do service. There was a waiting list. The others were asking, please, can I do service? That was the mood. When I joined, that was the mood. It wasn't like someone had to come and ask you. You would go and ask for service. Temple commander didn't have a very difficult task. <laughs> His difficult task was to engage everybody. Now it's a difficult task to engage anybody. In many cases, it's a struggle. It's a struggle. I've done, I served yesterday, and you're asking me again today? <laughs> I went to Mongol Arty, isn't that enough? <laughs> That's 30 minutes service, come on. I chatted my rounds, come on. We're supposed to be doing 24 hours service a day. That's devotional service. What form it takes, that's a detail. We're not here to do our own thing. Isn't it? Is that right or wrong? We may still have that tendency, but that's not where we're here to change that tendency. The whole Krishna conscious movement is to change that tendency 
of doing what I want. We don't even know who we are, so what is the meaning of what I want? It's what my conditional illusion perceives. The false ego wants. Like a prisoner, he wants to get out to carry on robbing people. A prisoner, a criminal. He wants to get out of jail so he can again rob people. We're denying ourselves the golden opportunity for eternal bliss, if that's on our minds, by trying to get some temporary relief, some temporary sense enjoyment, some temporary justification for my own illusion. That's not what Krishna consciousness movement's for. In the beginning, there's bound to be that element, but we have to understand that the process of changing is right here in this pastime, cleansing our hearts. Cheto Darpana Marjan. I was talking to Giri Rajmaj maybe I know, two years ago, I think, in London. I can't remember. I think it was last year or the year before. And what I was saying, I said, Maharaj, how to really, you know, still after so many years, there's still upcoming desires are there. What's your advice? He just said one line, Cheto Darpana Marjan. Cleanse the heart. And the process is Sankirtan. And that includes all the various services which go along with it. It's not just the chanting is going on all the time. That's supposed to be always there. The other services are also essential. Serving those devotees who are pure in heart is the process of developing the attraction to chanting the holy name. We haven't got time to go into. When Lord Chaitanya saw someone doing nicely, the Lord praised him. But if he saw that someone was not working to his satisfaction, he immediately chastised that person, not bearing him any grudge. Lord Chaitanya would chastise if you weren't cleaning nicely or properly or with all your heart. The Lord would say, you have done well. Please teach this to others so that they may act in the same way. As soon as they heard Chaitanya Mahaprabhu say this, everyone became ashamed. Thus the devotees began to work with great attention. They washed the Jagamohan area and then the place where food was kept. All other places were also washed. In this way, the meeting place was washed. The entire yard the raised sitting places, the kitchen, and every other room. Sometimes you open the door and it's like the garbage room. Everyone throws all their rubbish in there. Sometimes the room where the brushes and pans are kept is filthy. There's garbage in there, dust all over the place. That has to be cleansed more than anywhere practically. In some rooms, all the junk is in there. It's a junk room. You see, many times, the junk room. You know this word, junk? Junk, you know what it means? Pijoy, yeah. tell us what junk means. <laughs> Everything people don't want to look at. For yeah. A few years. Don't yeah. Use. All the old stuff, you know. Stuff you don't know what to do with, you don't want, you just like throw it in this room and close the door, you know. And it just, you can't even get in there after a while. It's just full of things. Is it also what we call junk food? The, the very bad food? Well, yeah, that's junk is the same. Rubbish. Yeah. Rubbish food, useless stuff. And we got so much junk in our hearts as well, haven't we? Yes. And so much junk. Thus all places around the temple were thoroughly washed within and without. We're going to jump over because these verses deal with the Bengali Brahmachari who wanted to drink the water which had washed Lord Chaitanya's lotus feet. Nice idea. A wonderful point. We'll jump over to text number 131. The Lord then personally sat down after all the cleansing was done. In the middle... 
and picked up all kinds of straw, grains and sand and dirty things. He sat amongst all the devotees who were in lines with their collections of dirt. It's like you go on Sangsan, you have a collection of Lakshmi maybe, and he sat down in amongst all the devotees. Sometimes Prabhupada would do that, he would be very happy. The devotees would come back and Prabhupada would personally count the Lakshmi with the devotees. He did that on a few occasions. While Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was picking up the straws and grains of sand, he said, I shall gather everyone's collection and I shall ask whoever has collected less that all of the others, excuse me, has collected less than all the others to pay a fine. You have to pay a fine. But it's not like an ordinary fine. It's a fine of sweet cakes and sweet rice. It's a nice <laughs> fine. You have to give everyone sweet rice and sweet cakes to make up for. But don't use that as an excuse, you know. And do, don't do very much and just bring everyone sweet rice and sweet cakes and say, okay. <laughs> it's nice, but it's not the real point. In this way, all the quarters of the Gunditra temple were completely cleansed and cleared. All quarters were cool and spotless like one's cleansed and pacified mind. It's so wonderful. I mean, when you're really covered in dirt, like Madam Gopal, someday he has to work in the gardens and the trees and dirt and dust. You come back and you take a full bath, a nice cleansing bath, and your clothes get put on clean clothes. You feel very fresh. You feel very nice, huh? So like that, when we immerse ourselves in this mood, it is like the whole heart becomes transformed. When the water from the different rooms was finally let out through the halls, it had appeared as if new rivers were rushing out to meet the waters of the ocean. Our hearts, our very being, were rushing out to enter into the ocean of pure devotional <laughs> service. Outside the gateway of the temple, all the roads were also cleansed, and no one could tell exactly how all this was done. The process of devotional service is imperceptible. Simply by rendering un devotional service, the more unalloyed or unmotivated the service becomes, the more constant service, unmotivated, uninterrupted service, the more that that is happening, imperceptibly the heart becomes cleansed. Of all what? It becomes cleansed of all material desires. Anyabila sita shunyam jnana kamadhyana Freed of all of the motivations. I wish we had time to read the whole purpose. It's a long purport. We'll just briefly mention some of it. Um, the whole point is to remove. And there are so many straws and dust, grains of sand, dirty things within our consciousness which need to be cleansed out, brushed out, washed out, swept out and thrown out never to come back again. One of the reasons Lord Chaitanya swept and washed outside to make sure that those grains of dust will not come back in again. So the outside or surrounding is also clean. It's a practical example. In other words, we keep ourselves in a situation where the dirty, we, another association, keep ourselves in good association so the dirty things do not come back in again. Criticisms, gossip, negative thoughts, mundane thoughts, doubts, impersonal perspectives, sense gratification. So many different factors are mentioned in this particular pur purport. It's not just cleansing the heart, being like an elephant. Huh? Prabhupada gives the example in this purport of the elephant bathing, cleansing. The elephant gets into the water and cleanses its whole body and then it may go outside and roll in the dirt again, straight away. And its whole body is again covered. So we may chant our rounds and then go straight into bad association. Or whether it's within our minds, we start to think of mundane things, or we may associate with mundane things on our internet, one devotee was saying to me yesterday, he's very happy here because where he's staying, there's no internet. He said when he's in his home, he doesn't live here, 
but when he's in his home, he has a tendency to spend much of his day wasting his day on the internet. And much of that pollutes your consciousness. There is so much rubbish, junk, on the internet, in amongst devotees also. WhatsApp is almost, in many cases, is nothing but junk. Back and forth, you know. How are you? Fine, here's my, my, I'm now eating samosa, a picture of samosa. It's not coming out. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, you spend an hour and a half just going back and forth on nothing. Uh, what scrap? What scrap, exactly. <laughs> it's incredible what people do. They can spend hours, and then when there's, t- there's no time left for chanting and hearing and serving. I got no time, I'm so busy. Busy doing what? Finding faults in others. In relishing, hearing negativity about other devotees. <coughs> true or not true. What good is it? I didn't read it yesterday. There was a nice post about Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Huh? I don't know if I have my mobile here, but a very nice post. He said, one of the most detrimental things in our spiritual life is to talk about other devotees when you don't need to. You don't talk about their... I'd like to read it. I don't know if we've got a mobile. My mobile's here or not? I don't know. Do I clock it? Yes, it is. I can't. I'd like, it has to be spoken properly. Let me see if, it, if technology is on our side today. <laughs> Yesterday it wasn't so favourable. Ah! Yes, why? Airplane mode is off. Ha! On. On. <laughs> Airplane mode. Whew. Don't have your airplane mode. Oh, my goodness. All... I'm going mad here now. 300 new messages. Fantastic. That will keep me busy all day long. And now I have something to do. Only uh, 168, 172, 176, 179. And there's some I haven't even bothered opening down there for the last six months. There's 179 at the top of the page there. Fantastic. Let's see. We wake up in the morning immediately. (sighs) You have to look at your messages. Right? Before you even turn the light on. You turn the mobile on. Any new messages? Great. Fantastic. Here we go. (coughs) Talking without reason. Talking without reason about other people is extremely adverse to devotional service. Many people talk about others to establish their own reputation or your own position or opinion. Nothing to do beneficial for the other person, not even for your own benefit. Being envious, some people are accustomed <coughs> to discuss others' character. God, Prabhu, you know, he's such a dude, you know. And if you know, you know, you talk like that, you know, sometimes. Just for the sake of it. The minds of those who are busy in such topics can never, never be fixed on the lotus feet of Krishna. Talking about others should be rejected in all respects. <coughs> Unless you have a duty to help that person, you're talking how to help them. What is the point of talking? Or if talking about them encourages you to do better service, it has to be positive. But simply to talk for the sake or to de- to belittle that person, to make them, is a detrimental process. And you will never be able to remember Krishna like that. <coughs> Devotional service is blocked. It's another anarchy <coughs> which can block us. This Pajalpa, as we have been talked about, is an aspect of Pajalpa. If a devotee wants at all to cleanse his heart, he must chant and hear the glories of the Lord. Sri Krishna. That's how we should engage our tongue. Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj asked his disciples to chant 64 rounds of japa. How many rounds can we struggle with 16, right? And this, this directive, it was mainly for his Grihasta disciples, not his sannyasis. He said they're already fully engaged in service. They have nothing else to do but serve. But Grihastas have other things to do. So he gave them 64 rounds. One of his Grihasta disciples came to him and said, Guru Maharaj, 
I haven't got time to chant 64 rounds. I'm married, I'm working. Bhakti Siddhanta Mahath said to him, I know how much time you have. You have so much time for gossip, but you have no time to chant. I give you 64 rounds to, to try to eradicate the tendency you have for gossip. So much time spent gossiping. He knew they weren't all chanting 64 rounds, but he wanted, in fact he even said, I, anyway that's another topic. But the idea was to keep fully engaged and not to throw dirt over ourselves in the process of devotional service. Prabhupada would say, whenever you get a spare moment, chant Hare Krishna. Hmm? You can hear him say it sometimes. Keep engaged. Don't idle mind is the devil's workshop. That's a famous saying, still there. The idle mind is the devil's workshop. And that's one thing. We've already got, you know, these tendencies within us. But then... Maybe we do cleanse ourselves, then we go into a situation again we expose ourselves to the same dirt and our heart starts to become negative again. It's a, what can we say, it's the whole topic of our Krishna consciousness movement is there. And then Prabhupada also goes into a quite extensive description of various specifics such as kutinati. What is Kutinati? Who knows what Kutinati is? All details. Pardon? All details. Small okay. details. Okay. Small details. Small details, it could be, but here specifically, what does it mean? Fault finding. <laughs> finding faults. Now, faults may be there, but we have to see our own faults first. When Bhakti Siddhanta was, Amaj was asked one time by one disciple, should we use anger against those who are envious of Krishna? He said, yes, you should. But you have to look and see first who is envious of Krishna. And when I look at my own heart, I find no one more than I who am envious than Krishna. I am envious. So we use anger against our own inner envy. He used it in many cases. This is, Look at when faults in others delude and bewilder you, look within. Find out your own situation. Don't point the finger at others. It's the example of the needle criticizing the sieve. You know the sieve? It's one of these things you sieve the, you know, the grains through, you know, to get all the stones out, you know. It's got thousands of holes in it. And the needle, which has one, no. The other way around, isn't it? The sieve. The sieve is criticizing the needle. Ha! Ah, you've got a hole in you. Look at you. <laughs> the sieve has nothing but holes. <laughs> we have so many faults. Let's face it. We speak a lot of philosophy, but what about our applica application in our own hearts? That's the main purpose. This to cleanse our own hearts. Not everyone else's. We can't do much for others. We, and Lord Chaitanya was showing he himself was doing the most. No need to clean. But he himself was showing the most. Huh? What is pratishta? That you may have heard many times. Pratishta. So kutinati, this fault-finding, gossiping tendency. And you know, there's too much of this on the internet, on the WhatsApp, on the social media. Far too much. And the tendency is because of our conditioning, we are attracted to it. We almost like to see somebody getting put down, rightly or wrongly. It's kind of a form of sense gratification. What is pratishta? Wanting to look. Yeah, important. you want to be important, huh? You want this uh, desire for name and fame, recognition. We have all got a bit of that, I'm sure. I certainly do. A little question. Mm. There is a place in the Chaitanya Charitamrita where it's described the weed. This is the weeds, right? These are various weeds. And there's a place, there's a verse that says that these weeds who grow with the creeper of bhakti, sometimes they look exactly like the bhakti. They do indeed. Where, where is that? Do you know where that is? 
Do you remember Bhagavat where that discussion is there? Where the, the weeds grow alongside the Bhakti Lata creeper. They look very similar. You can hardly identify it. Only even during Lord Chaitanya's time, the great devotees of the Lord could not recognize them sometimes. Some of them are obvious, but the subtle ones are not. And sometimes devotees would come, or persons, maybe devotee may not be the right term, would come to Puri. There was one famous example of one, someone called Ramdas. And he, everyone thought he was a great devotee. He was always chanting, but he was a Mayavadi inside. <coughs> Looked great on the outside. Everyone thought, oh, he's a great devotee. They, they were thinking, but he'd come to Lord Chaitanya. Sarup Damodar rejected him. He could see that the motivation was not at all devotion. It was impersonal, in fact. Others would write various glorifications of the Lord, which sounded wonderful, but Sarup Damodar would reject them because he could see that they were rasa-basa. They were not favourable for the actual mood of pure devotional service. They appeared like... Again and again, these situations are there. We may not be able to recognise. Yes, thank you for that question. We should look that up and find out where that is in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. It's a very significant thing. You know, I've, it's a while, it is fascinating. The last few days, um, the potatoes are growing in the garden down the bottom there, but more than potatoes, weeds are growing. There are at least 20 times more weeds than there are potato plants down there. You can't see the potatoes for weeds, the thistles, these spiky ones, they grow real fast. So I don't know rightly or wrongly, but I spend about an hour a day pulling them out by the root, out of the ground, these thistles, one after the other. They have to be plowed in. Eventually, or what? The best thing is to plough them. That means you have to plough all the potatoes in as well. How do you do that? No, no not, not with the potatoes. But that's the best method. Yeah, but the potatoes are growing amongst them. What do we do? No, you can plough them later. When the later, when the... Yeah, but do they not... It seems like where they're growing, they're strangling the potatoes. The potatoes, are, they're like ten times higher than the potatoes are not <laughs> growing. What do you do? It's like a weed patch, you know? I don't know. I mean, I'm just doing what my inner heart's telling. Pull these guys out. Let the potatoes get some air. Let them get some light. Let them not be, you know, down below some nourishment. I don't know, but that's just what it said. But we have to pluck these weeds out. That's the point of it. They are there and they will stifle their bhaktila to beach. They have to be pulled out. But how to recognize them sometimes? They are recognized in the association of devotees. They are recognized by, prayer, by sincere prayer. My Lord, please. We can appeal to the Lord if we don't see them to please. You know all my faults. You know all my faults. Please help me to rectify this. If you were here yesterday, we sang quite a few songs of Bhakti Vinod Thakur during the morning. And he's giving us this hint of recognition of these faults or these weeds and the methodology of removal of the weeds. Very wonderful uh, experience, you could see. So look that up and find it. So we just one or two more here mentioned. Uh, Nishid Hajahara, that's not so famous one, I think. Nishid Hachara. That means accepting things which are forbidden in the scripture. And again, we were hearing the other day from Bhagavat about accepting that which is favourable and rejecting that which is unfavourable. We do not know. We have to find that out from authority, what is favourable and unfavourable, and reject that which is unfavourable if we want to progress. Jiva Hinksa, what is that? That may be well known. Jiva Hinksa. Violence, violence. violence. violence huh? or not just violence, but envy. envy. Not just the external manifestation, but the internal envy of anybody. Even speaking ill of anyone. You see, Srila Prabhupada sometimes mentions names because he have to. 
but generally you don't. You mention the four, not the four four so to speak. Hate the sin, not the sinner, as Jesus said. You're not envious of the person. You're not angry with the person, but you may be angry with their activity because it's detrimental or displeasing to God and detrimental for them. But not the person. You love the person. You want to save the person. They're Krishna's part and parcel. And uh, karma. I would hope everyone knows what karma means. What is karma? Lust. Lust. Desire. It's not, lust is sometimes just thought of a sexual in, in inclination. It's not. It's a desire for material gain. Prabhupada described primarily that is a desire for economic development. So it can be there. Un, un, inord, inordinate. Unnecessary desire for economic development. Economic development has to be there, but not more than necessary. Some people can't give up. They're right to the day they die, they're trying to accumulate. These are weeds, which can strangle the Bhaktilata beach. And Kutinati. What is Kutinati? Trying to avoid them. Excuse me? Uh, Kutinati. Yes, it's new fault file. Well, it's mentioned twice here. Fault finding, and it also means, it's funny, it comes up twice, so that means it's really serious. And its other meaning is duplicity. And this is the root, practically speaking, seeing oneself, speaking one thing and feeling another or meaning another. And that's basically our whole existence in this world. Um, you know, separate. We've separated, even we speak some philosophy, we've got some other intention. It's, it's all related. Eh? Or we have, we're not really applying it ourselves. It's duplicitous. Telling others to do it and not applying it ourselves. And one last one here is puja. Puja. It's very, very similar, you could say, to uh, Patishta. Patishta. Puja. It perhaps goes a little bit further than Patishta. Puja. Prabhupada takes it to the point where he says, eventually you want to be seen as an avatar. I am an avatar. I am God. Many people have this. It's not just about being recognized for your conditional qualities, your mundane knowledge, your beauty, or you know, whatever you think you've got. But the uh, very idea that I am the center of everything. I'm God's gift to mankind. I'm God's gift to mankind. In fact, I'm everything. I'm not just a gift, I am the gift also. I am everything. I am mankind. I am the gift. I am the universe. I am everything. I am the center of all that be. Worship me. Boom, 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 boom. We heard how yesterday how Bhakti Vinod dealt with one such person, Bishikasheng, last night if you were here. How Bhakti Vinod Thakur dealt with Bishikasheng, who thought, or at least he was trying to convince people he was God, he was Mahavishnu himself. And thousands of people were worshipping him. Bhakti Vinod eventually had him imprisoned, locked up in prison because he was imitator. What did Krishna do to Pondraka? Killed him. Yes, he <laughs> killed him. No. no. How did he, he kill him? He cut his head off. <sighs> Sliced his head off with his disc. And sent it to Varanasi. Uh, Kasi? Oh, this, this was Kashi. That was the king uh, of Kasi. Yes. Yes. The king of Kasi was a supporter of Pondraka, who also then went on the war path against Krishna, and Krishna sliced his head off with his disc and set his head flying into his city of Kashi. In this book, what is the meaning of Sudarshan and Sudarshan Chakra? Because it's Sudarshan. 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 Very auspicious ah. Darshan. Most auspicious. The Lord's mo is very mo the Lord's da uh, chakra is most auspicious. Mm -hmm. Darshan. 
But if you have your head cut off by the Sudarshan, you're very lucky. If you see the Sudarshan coming, you're out of here. <laughs> yes, I read some, I can't remember what it was now, something which followed on with that little devotee. How Sudarshan appears for a devotee. Forgotten. Um, by the way, here is. Uh, in commentary of Madhya, uh, 19th chapter, 159 purport about these uh, unwanted creepers that look exactly like... There we have it. 19th... Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. The 19th chapter of Madhya Lila, uh, 159th verse, purport. 19159. Yes, perfect. Perfect, thank you. 19159. 1959, you can remember it by that. 1959. 159. Oh, 159. 19th chapter? Yes. 159. Madhuri. Madhuri. Make a note. Perfect. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So let's try to please the Lord. And most of all, the Lord is pleased when he sees us seriously taking this on board and cleansing our hearts. And then the heart becomes a suitable place for the Lord to reveal himself. And also the next verse. And the next verse, 160. That's a little easier to remember. It's also in the verse itself. If one doesn't distinguish between the Bhakti creeper and other creepers, the sprinkling of water is misused because the other creepers are nourished while the Bhakti creeper is curtailed. This is the teachings to Rupa or Sanatana? Mm. Probably. It's... I think it's Rupa, isn't it? I think it's in Rupa Goswami section. Rupa Goswami section. Rupa section. Rupa Goswami section. Yes. yes. Brilliant, wonderful, fantastic. So we're another type of cleansing. We're going out onto the streets of Tours to cleanse the streets or the people of Tours today. If anyone wants to join us, please bring your bicycles. Um, we don't have many cars, so <laughs> start early, okay? <laughs> I don't know if we have enough transport, but let's see. Which, um, which text did you start with today, with this? Uh, Majalila chapter, well, I started with the very first verse, but then I bounced on. Yes. Number, what was it? Number 79, I think, wasn't it? The first verse I read, I think it was 79. Uh, yeah, there are about 79, 80, something like that. Hare Krishna. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai, Gundicha Marjana Ki Jai, Go Premanandi. This comes from my library.